May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever loves the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. A while back, a friend told me of an exchange he had with his young daughter. She was standing in her bedroom, leaning up against the wall and turning the light switch on and off. And this child, perhaps three or four, said, Daddy, where does the light go when I turn darkness on? That gave him pause for thought. Daddy, where does the light go when I turn darkness on? Perhaps you've lived long enough, I certainly have, and faced enough sinfulness to see this child's question as one to be pondered perhaps at a deeper level. The people of Judah found out what happens when they turned darkness on. In our first reading today from the second book of Chronicles, we read that the people of Judah mocked the messengers of God, scoffed at his prophets. The chosen people added infidelity to infidelity. They did not keep holy the Sabbath. They practiced all the abominations that non-believers did. And ultimately, their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set their own homes ablaze, destroyed all their possessions. And those who were not killed were taken to Babylon as slaves, where they were kept for 70 years. the dreadful experience of the chosen people of Judah and this little girl's question of her father may be instructive for us in our Lenten journey on this Laetare Sunday. We might come at the question from the opposite direction rather than asking as the little girl did, where does the light go when I turn darkness on? We might ask, where does darkness go when we turn light on? When we refute powerful new cultural currents in our own time that are directly opposed to the basic moral teachings of our Judeo-Christian tradition and increasingly hostile to Christianity itself, when we refute these where does the darkness go? When we recognize that the church's witness 
is of its very nature public. When we seek to convince by proposing rational arguments in the public arena, where does the darkness go? When we don't allow religious freedom to be reduced to mere freedom of worship without guarantees of respect for freedom of conscience, where does the darkness go? We don't live centuries before Christ like the chosen people who were enslaved in Babylon. No, we are privileged to live in this blessed land. We call ourselves the people of God. So when we give appropriate attention to our responsibilities and to our opportunities, where does the darkness go? When fear does not eclipse our faith, when we choose to believe, when we choose to hope, where does the darkness go? When we look for prophets in our midst and heed them, where does the darkness go? When we respond to God's many gifts given us by Lenten acts of self-denial, or when we refuse to leave the needy hanging by not sharing with them, where does the darkness go? When we refuse to take verbal shots at other people, or when we say the good things that ought to be said, or when we don't settle for a potty mouth, where does the darkness go? When we do not dress in such a way as to be a temptation for someone else, or when we keep custody of our eyes, where does the darkness go? When we refuse to act in anger and refuse to turn anger inward, when we apologize and accept apologies, where does the darkness go? Sometimes we're tempted to hold back from risking for others. It might help to see these temptations to hold back from risking as tests, or better yet, merely pop quizzes. It might help to see our teacher, Jesus, saying we've covered this material before many times. Why are you anxious? It might help to see Jesus reminding us when we are tempted to stay back with the crowd. Haven't I come through for you over and over again? We might see Jesus saying, remember that Moses in the desert raised the bronze serpent on a staff in order to heal the people. Wasn't I raised on a cross for you? Did I not rise from the dead to heal and strengthen you for this day? We might see Jesus saying to us, you pass the test, you triumph over temptation, you live in the light, you drive darkness away. Each time you come to me, each time you bring others with you, each time you step out of the crowd like Veronica did in the sixth station, each time you wipe the face of Jesus, you drive darkness away. Veronica is a beautiful name indeed. It comes from two words actually, vera, truth, true, icon, image, true image. Veronica got that on the tail with which she wiped the face of Jesus, courageously stepping out of the crowd, lovingly, tenderly, wiping his bloody, bloody face as he ascended the hill of Calvary for our salvation. But even more than the towel, Veronica, true image, she became that, didn't she? An image of Christ stepping out on behalf of those in need. 
and each time you step out of the crowd like Simon did to help one, someone carry their cross, you drive darkness away. What Jesus asks for us, what Jesus hopes for us on this Laetare Sunday, so close to the dawning of our salvation, he asks simply, come to me, bring others with you, live in the light, rejoice with me.